one of the most common database management systems used in web applications is MySQL. Traditionally, this has often been the first relational database management system that web developers learn to use. And there is still a lot of material available online on how to program PHP with MySQL. At the beginning of the course, we install the XAMPP package. This used to come with MySQL. But nowadays, MariaDB database management system is included instead. MariaDB is a backend compatible drop-in replacement for MySQL. This means that all the MySQL databases software and PHP code written to work with MySQL are 100% compatible with MariaDB. It was created by the original developers of MySQL as a fully free and open source alternative to MySQL. Before we can access the database server, we need to make sure XAMPP is running in the access control panel in Windows which says MySQL even though it's actually MariaDB. They just haven't changed this label in the application. We need to make sure that this is green which means that it's running. If it's not, you need to Click on the start button to start it. To administer MySQL or MariaDB, we are going to use PHP by admin. So click on this admin. This is a free software package written in PHP that runs in a browser. It comes included with XAMPP. So all we need is to access a local installation of PHP my admin. We go to the URL localhost slash PHP my admin. On the right, we have some details of our database server and about the computer. So this is our server, local server that this is running on. And this will be different depending on your computer. But one thing to note is that we are running MariaDB. Even though the XAMPP control panel says MySQL. But they are 100% compatible. So this is nothing to worry about. On the left. Here we have a list of all databases on this server. A single installation of MariaDB can contain more than one database. In fact, you can have as many as you like. These databases are created by default. When XAMPP is installed and these databases here are created by default when XAMPP is installed and are used internally by the XAMPP server or database server and by PHP my admin. So we won't touch these. Let's go ahead and create a new database. To do that, we click on databases up here and first we need to supply a database name. You can put anything you like in here, but it's a good idea to keep it lowercase, use underscores instead of spaces and of course make it meaningful. For example, if it's a database of my blog, and I might call it like daily blog. You see, I didn't specify a space. I just specify an underscore and it is lowercase. And uh, if you have an need to offer an online shop, then you can might call it as my store and so on. As we are developing a content management system in this course, so let's create our database and name it as CMS. There is a very long list of collection to choose from here. So which one do we choose? The collection is basically a set of rules for how the database server compares strings to text. So string comparisons are used when you search the database for specific data. However, if you choose UTF-8 and before so we are looking for Unicode and here it is. Now if you click on this UTF-8 and before Unicode CI, it's a character set that which contains all the characters for our modern website or modern languages and all the Unicode versions of it includes a more complete comparison algorithm for comparing strings. 
So unless you have a specific reason to use another one, I recommend to use or to choose this one. Then we we'll click on create and that's it. Our database is created. The next step is optional, but I highly recommend that you do it to access a database for PHP my admin. We will see shortly. You need a username and password. The root user has access to all databases including the new one we just created. However, in XAMPP by default this user has no password. So this is a bad practice to be used to. So instead of using the root user to access our database, we will add a new user account for this database. First of all, we enter the username. So just click or add a new user. As we are going to be using this user account to access the database from our website, I will call it as my CMS user. Next, we will change the host name to local. As we are only going to be accessing this database from the same computer. So that's why we choose local. And for the password, we will generate by clicking on the generate button and this gives us a nice secure password. You could argue that this is not really necessary as the database is only accessible on your own computer. But it's a good practice to get used to. Before we continue, you need to make sure that you have copied and saved this password somewhere as we will need it later. Once you have created this user, there is no way to view what password we use. So if you forget it, you will have to come back in here and change it. The checkbox grant all privileges to our database and you can see it is already checked which means that the user will be allowed to do anything with the database which is what we want. So all we need to do now is to scroll down and at the bottom click on go and we have created it our user so now our database is ready to start storing data thanks for watching this video if you have any questions you can ask in the comment section